So we pick up from there. Uh, that is qualities of a good interviewer, where we talked last time, and look at persuasive communication. Look at persuasive communication. Persuasive communication. So we write that a communication is persuasive. A communication is persuasive. To the extent it attempts, a communication is persuasive. To the extent it attempts to influence behavior and thinking. To the extent it attempts to influence behavior and Thinking, behavior and thinking. Full stop. A message is considered persuasive. A message is considered persuasive when its primary objective, when its primary objective is to cause an action, is to cause an action, is to cause an action when the listener may ignore or resist the message. When the Reason up me no or resist the message. We'll stop. The most successful persuasive message, the most successful persuasive message. is the one that offers is the one that offers the audience offers the audience real benefits real benefits real benefits and other helpful information and other helpful information and other helpful information. So that is what you're calling a persuasive message. It is a message that is uh, supposed to influence how you think and how you behave. And we are saying it is the message that is aimed at ensuring that it causes an action in a situation where otherwise the person would ignore the message or resist. When the message is communicated at the first go, we know who to an Isaacata. So we want to persuade them. Now, if you want to be very, very effective in persuading people, then make sure you present to them the benefits. Why should you join Destiny? Why should you buy this? What are the other additional information that you can give to this person? So when you try or appear to solve the problem of the person, uh, then the message becomes persuasive. Let's look at principles of persuasive communication. 
principles of persuasive communications. Principles of persuasive communications. Number one is called reciprocity. Number one is reciprocity. 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 And write that this is the expectation for the exchange. This is the expectation for the exchange of services. For the exchange of services or value mutual. Or value mutual. Or value mutual. Number two, scarcity. Scarcity. Scarcity, and we write that people are usually attracted. People are usually attracted to something rare and exclusive. Usually attracted to something rare and exclusive. People are usually attracted to something rare and exclusive. <laughs> Number three, authority. Authority. <clears throat> And write that reference experts in expertise, reference experts, reference experts in expertise and expertise to gain credibility, to gain credibility. Gain credibility and support decision making. And support decision making. Number four is consensus. Consensus. It should create a hard mentality. Hard mentality. It should create a hard mentality. Since people tend to look at each other, since people tend to look at each other when making a decision. People tend to look at each other when making a decision. Number five is liking. Liking. I write that people are drawn to people who like them. People are drawn to people who like them and communicate to them. And communicate to them. And communicate to them. So you can check April 2022. Question of April 2022. Question 1C. Now, if you are doing a, a persuasive communication, these principles must be adhered to. Number one, there should be reciprocity. As in, the two of you should come to a point where you know you are going to exchange what. It is tit for tat. 
It is not only you gaining. It is not only me gaining. When I'm asking you to join Destiny and you bring your money, Destiny gains the 20,000 that you have paid. But you, what you start to get. So that point must be made very clear so that you know, as I bring my 20,000 to Destiny, this is what I start to get. So that's what we call this prosecuting. Number two, there should be scarcity. If you want to persuade people, then ensure that you are rare. When something is scarce, value goes up. It's just like even in friendships. If you are friends and every time you are in my house, every time you are in my house, Tafika Mahari, I devalue you. That's all. But if you take a while before you visit my house or before I visit your house or before we meet, then you find uh, now people start telling each other, I am missing you. So when you say I am missing you, it means the value has increased because the person has become what? They, are, they have become exclusive. So you must ensure that the message that you are communicating is showing something that is clear. The other thing is uh, you should have authority. Now, when you talk about authority, you are supposed to refer to some experts and some expertise. And this is where you see some people referring to, uh, like maybe destiny. We can get one guy who has graduated from a school, who is a successful bank manager, a successful business person, someone who is doing well out there. And then we make him or we request him to make an advert uh, where he's saying, I also was trained at Destiny. And we normally see these adverts, especially driving schools. Now, most of the guys are saying, I also saw the other day, Techno, I to be uh, uh, this ability is God who this guy when you are the marathon, Juicy. Don't forget him like me. He's a very famous guy. I'm forgetting the name. Eh? Uh, the guy, no, he, he did not win, he was defeated by another guy. Yeah, but he has been a holder of that record for long. So you will put that those guys. The other one is consensus. Try to show that you are starting as many people because people try to go with what? Hard mentality. Hard to become a mipusiwengi, mobewengi, wanyamawengi. So people go where there are people. That's why you see when you go to the pastor, unapata matatu ikifika hapo, wanajaza makanga kumi na mmoja. Na hiyo nisani ya watu kumi na wawini. So sasa wewe unakuja, unangalia nigani kwa karibu kuja, unaingia. Ukifikiria, you are the last person. Kube, you are there. Fine. As soon as you sit down, naona jamaa mechungoka mmoja. Then, um, mungine anakucha. Hipo, hipo. Have you ever seen that? Yes, it's called uh, hard mentality. Then, liking. If you are communicating a message, let it come out in a way that people are able to see that you love, that you like them. Because people like people who like them. Actually, one of the things that the current president used in his campaigns is the ability to portray himself as a man of the people, as a man who can interact with people. We will see him go to the Vibandas, Anaka Mahali, Wanakura Nyamachoma, Wanakura Mahidi, Pamoja. Do you used to see those things? Yeah. They're, they're just to show people that you like them. And people like him because Wanaona Uyuni Mojawet. But when you show that you are above them, you cannot easily interact with the people, then you lose out. So those are the five points that we call principles of persuasive communication. Let's look at objectives of persuasive communication. Objectives of persuasive communication. Objectives of persuasive communication. One is stimulate. One is stimulate. Stimulate and we explain. To strengthen their beliefs. To strengthen their beliefs. Comma. Interests. Interests and bring them to the foreground. And bring them to the foreground. 
ya sabemos. Okay. Number two, convince. Number two is convince. Convince. Uh, the right, bring change in beliefs. Bring change in beliefs. Attitudes, attitudes, comma judgments, judgments, and values of the old days. Judgments and values of the old days. Number three is call to action. Call to action. Call to action. Right. Create curiosity. Create curiosity. Come and solve a problem. Solve a problem or propose a range of options or propose a range of options as solutions as solutions. Another one is charisma. 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 Being seen as a brand. Being seen as a brand. Or as an extraordinary personality. Or as an extraordinary personality.
the next to me sema being seen as a brand or an extraordinary personality Aya. number next is make existing attitudes more resistant to change make existing attitudes more resistant to change number six is allow individuals to make allow individuals to make independent decisions allow individuals to make independent decisions in a well informed environment decisions in a well informed environment so those are the objectives that we have as far as uh, persuasive communication is concerned we want to stimulate. To stimulate is to charge people, it is to make people to start thinking about something new. It is to be able to strengthen their beliefs, their interests. And uh, you bring them to the fore. As in Sasa, we are to interest yake in answer to one kind. Maybe you know, Sasa, an answer to Skiza, Aman answer to Temberea, or they start doing something, they start talking to you. That is what we call stimulation. Once they show interest, then you need to convince them. It's like uh, when someone comes to our front office, the parent and uh, an inquiry, or someone makes a call, that person has been stimulated. They have shown their interest. What now you need to do is to convince them so that you change their mind and make them to register as students, or you make them buy your product, or you make them do what you wish them to do for you. Uh, then call to action, that is what now you're saying, after you have convinced the person then they register or they buy or they do what you wanted them to, to do. The other objective of uh, persuasive communication, it has to be, uh, it has to create charisma. This is where you want to do brand building. You want to be seen as an extraordinary. You want to be seen as unique. Then you want to make existing attitudes more resistant to change. And you want to allow individuals to make pending decisions. Just a minute.
Good. Uh, like now, exactly what I'm from doing is what I'm teaching. Someone has just called. They have shown interest of joining this. So, yes, but in section five. So, the person has shown interest. Now, I'm talking to her and I have talked to her. I've already convinced her. Now, where I am waiting is the call to act. So, Sasa, I'm saving the documents to her. Sasa, give us your money and get us up. Yes, so that is how it's done. Uh, let's look at uh, approaches through techniques of pers persuasion. Approaches through techniques of persuasion. How do you persuade? Between men and uh, women who are good in persuading. Hmm? <laughs> Women are good, eh? Yeah, they're good in persuading. That's why now I'm not a problem. Raise women. Yeah. So the techniques. You can say about techniques are my approaches. Eh? One is appeal to the individual. One, appeal to the individual. to the individual and write that this is about using a second person's point of view this is about using is about using a second person's point of view is about using a second person's point of view, full stop. It makes the message feel more personal and direct.
full stop. It empathizes with the audience. It empathizes. Empathizes. Empathizes with the audience. Empathize with the audience by creating a, a, a relatable content to them. By creating a relatable content to them. Relatable content to them. So what we mean by that, uh, or what we do in this appeal to the individual, you use another person's viewpoint. Like I had said earlier, uh, you get someone who has experienced that product and has accepted, although at the beginning, I don't want to be a wrong for example, driving Kitambo. driving But ideally, you should get those people who have experienced the, the product. Come and destiny to them to a mesomea destiny. their viewpoint. Now, when they give the viewpoint, they are going to empathize with the audience. To empathize means they will be in the shoes of the student or of the audience because they are coming from a story that is familiar. For example, maybe some of you are in the first year or second year of the university. So someone will say, I have just joined first year and I was pursuing this course. I joined Destiny and they helped me to pursue my CPA as I was pursuing my patent. So if you are in the first year also or second year or thereabout, that story becomes relatable. You are able to identify with it. And when you're able to identify with it, then you join destiny or you do whatever else they are saying. Number two is establish authority. Establish authority. Establish authority. And write that. This is explaining to the audience. This is explaining to the audience why you are a trustworthy source for information. Why you are a trustworthy source for information. It involves providing details of your trainings and experiences. It involves providing details of your trainings and experiences. That's called establishing uh, authority. Why should you listen to me? Like now that you are in my class, why should you listen to me? Why should you trust me? Now, I will answer that question by giving you my trainings, my experience. Sometimes back we used to do it. Uh, I don't know whether teachers still do it here. I don't know how to do it. Uh, but you would come to a class like this one. You first of all, list your qualifications. You say, I am Kimani. I hold a MBA from the University of Nairobi. I hold BA from KU, I'm a CPAK, I hold CFA, I hold a diploma in IT. Those are my qualifications. A diploma in what? I have two other diplomas. So when you make work here, I saw qualifications, then you know I'm at the right what? Place. Whoever is teaching me knows what they are doing. But if I told you that uh, maybe the Rifania 2 uh, CPA section one, tab on other sick of all the papers. But in the communication skills for all. So that's a push. Yes. 
but when i come and i give my qualification unaona nikianza kuandika naona lakini anaanza ku change face it, it convinces you and this is one of the things that is used by people who want to call kuna watu wengi huko nje wanajiita ma doctor am doctor so and so because when you hear you are being taught by doctor aso nasema hapa tu nitakupe ni doctor fake so uh, but all the same eh, the objective is to establish what Uh, authority and finally convince or persuade this person. Number three, generate anticipation. Generate anticipation. Anticipation. and write that keep attention of the audience after getting it keep attention of the audience after getting it full stop This is done by creating suspense. This is done by creating suspense. The other day I listened to a story, I don't know whether it's good to narrate or not. Eh? And the story was going like this. Eh? Uh, that there was this young man who would find a very beautiful lady passing by his place. And he kept on trying to talk to the girl to say hi, and the girl would not talk. Or if the girl would talk, ni matusi. But on this particular day, the girl came looking for him. No, no, not the girl. Yeah, the girl came looking for him in his house. So when he heard the knock, akafungua mulango, he found it is there. And now he was surprised sasa huyu amekuja kunichapa sababu nilikuwa nikimchokoza kwa barabara ama nikija nini The girl said eh, don't be worried i have come to visit you The girl akija kwa nyumba Kia akaje hapo kwa city So the man sasa being confused of what is happening akakimbia kwa duka kununua masiwa So are you guessing where next I'm headed <laughs> Do you want to hear when he came with the milk? What happened? Yes, that is what you're saying. Hata mwenye alipeana hiyo story hapo Matsia. But what I wanted to say is, eh, unapeana ka story such that at the end of the particular page, people want to hear the next. Sasa kijana alikununua maziwa. Je, alipata msichana bado wako kwa nyumba na msichana alikuwa na ujumbe gani? Those are what we are calling the suspense. So when you are talking to people When people have given you attention, make sure you retain it by creating what? Suspense. By creating suspense. Or like uh, when you do like sales, eh, you will always find uh, a statement, can I say, but you should always, uh, in case you have any question, please let us. That is called keeping the conversation alive. Or how can I help you? Are you satisfied? Is that all? Yeah, but we see, communicate in a way like Sasa to Memadzana. Your information the pattern is or not. Just try to create what? Uh, 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 a continuity. Next is uh, address objectives, or rather address objections I. Address objections I. a minute
Okay. Address objections early. And realize that identify possible objections. Identify possible objections. And address them right away. And address them right away. First of all, it is called the even if method. It's called the even if method. So that's when uh, you are talking to people. Now, uh, Najua, they are likely to object. So, first of all, Atakama Pendagi to Miskiza, Atakama Pendagi to Ogea Namimi, Atakama Iki to Forahishi. So, you start from there so that the audience, Akua Najua, Unajua, that you are not very happy with this particular issue or they are likely to resist it. So, it helps you now to move from that objection to the next level. But if you just come and start talking, someone will start wondering, Sasa huyo anajuanga venye na poekata kumisikisa, anajuanga venye na chukia ima nene. But when you identify with it, Ali, it creates a new platform. The next is uh, foot in the door. That's number five. Foot in the door. Foot in the door. Uh, right, that this is obtaining a person's compliance. This is obtaining a person's compliance with a small request, with a small request at first. With a small request at first. In order to subsequently increase, in order to subsequently increase the probability of that person's compliance, in order to subsequently increase the probability of that person's compliance. With a subsequent RAD request. With a subsequent RAD request. RAD request. Yeah, and, and that is uh, very, very popular even in the relationship that people form. What one has an anger to do? A small request. I. So I expect you to respond. Others are just me and phone. That's a small request. That's how you respond. Then you appear whether now I can bring what the hand tomorrow. Then you appear whether now I can move my chair from where here I come and sit where to R. Then you appear whether now I can request you to escort me to the pastor. So by and by, by and by. And when the person uh, takes the small request, then eventually they will take the big request. They will be able to meet the big request. It is what people say, welcome to a box. Now you can deal with them. For example, the person I was just talking to, the school fees they are asking for, they, they, what they are asking is 23,000. So I can remember 23,000, and they look at too much. What about the installments? The one the first one is what? 11,000. So now, you know, as a can, then come on here. What you can do? There's a new one down. What's the number of the year? So now you're talking like a bit. That's a little one down the year you get in the Taliba. Next week, you go even more important. So you see now, I have gone down from 23 to what? 1,000. So we went to a Kubali 1,000. So finally, the Taliba is giving me. Yes, because of the other song. But when you start with the big one, you are here. Let's see more than 23,000. 
we will use it. We will not pursue it in the past. But we will be able to get 1,000, we will be able to get 1,000. That's what I'm saying here. Buy and buy an answer to buy. Put in the door. The other one, you need to add door in the face. Door in the face. Number six. Door in the face. Number eight. Number eight. Door in the face. And write that this is obtaining compliance with a bigger request at first. This is obtaining compliance with a bigger request at first. A bigger request at first. In order to subsequently reduce in order to subsequently reduce in order to subsequently reduce the probability of the person's compliance probability of the person's compliance with a subsequent smaller request A subsequent smaller requests. Now that one can be used in two ways. Eh? Number one is when you are really interested in that person or you are interested in that thing. So once I'm back in very good things, big ones, and especially when you think there could be a competitor. So to say me, unaona hui mtu anataka pesa. Na huyo competitor mwenye anaweza kuja, anaweza kuja na elfu moja. So what do you do at the first go? Unaangusha 20,000. So ukisha apea huyo mtu 20,000, you are competitor akikuja na ka elfu moja. Will they be accepted? So it is what you are calling door in the face. Football. So that a subsequent smaller request will be detected. The other way in which you can use it is when you are not interested in the person. Maybe one of the in the previous dealings. So what you do, you demand of them to do a very big thing. So that from there now you can start requesting them to do smaller things. For example, yesterday a student came here, uh, met me. And uh, the student wanted to be allowed to class without having paid the required fee. But when I looked at the statement here last time, I could leave a full amount. So for me to grant you this, that's my kwanza we the So you first of all put a big what request. That's why I comply in here, so it can be used in those two ways. In the same way, ni mahali you want me, na una offer competitor and a kuja, but that so na payana kubwa. You offer a competitor kuja. Number two is when you are dealing with a shark or say previously. So you really put it's like uh, you have been in a relationship with a person, Namka Hosan, and they want a ma a camper, whatever kind of a relationship. Uh, and life is about relationships. Eh? So Shanghai, I'm talking about relationships all the time. You could just have two, I'll teach you that. Life is about what? Relationships, including the one I have with you. A teacher what? Student. Uh, so, kama huyo mtu mulisha ako sana, you want them now to, they want to come back. You put that back to be very high. The other one is called uh, create perception of popularity. That's number seven. Create a perception of popularity. Create a perception of popularity. I realize that people may be more receptive. People may be more receptive to 
to an idea or a product. To an idea or a product. If they feel that, if they feel that, everyone else believes in it. If they feel that everyone else believes in it. Full stop. Appeal to people's desire to conform to a group. Appeal to people's desire to conform to a group. People's desire to conform to a group. You know, uh, there is what we call the peer pressure. People want to comply. They, they want to look like everyone else. Actually, that's why you hear, especially when people want to make decisions, eh? like juzi to kuwa na uchaguzi, na siya watu wakiuliza, huko kwenu muna chagua nani, huko watu wanasema aje, o ni hivo, ah, sasa kama ni hivo, wacha, wende hivo. Because people want to comply. Very few of us have the courage to stand alone as Nick. Yesterday I saw the, this uh, MP for Kedokuri, Kathonu Wamoshopa, choosing to start unique. I think I also saw Pasaris choosing to start unique. Yeah. Did you watch those things? Kathonu stood unique against her group. Squad yake ya Kenya Kwanza it was supporting, see there? So ya kamua propose. Pasaris, squad yake ya Azimio, it was opposing. Ya kamua ku support. Yeah, very few of us have such courage of starting leak. We just want to be, to be compliant. And there are many things we do not because we, 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 we are convinced or we like them, but just not to cause our art. Just to be seen, to kopamoja na art, eh, which is not very good. It is always recommended that you should gather courage to to be unique. But now here, if you want to persuade people, portray your idea as popular. Waonyeshe kuna watu wengi sana who are buying it, who are going for it. There are many people who believe in it. That's why unaonaka ma politicians wakienda kwa mkutano, wana uvea na media, mkutano inazumiwa, inaonekana kama ikona so many people. Sasa ukiona, hey, kisumu kulikuwa hivyo, hey, eldolet kulikuwa hivyo, hey, isioro kulikuwa hivyo, oh, muranga kulikuwa hivyo. Nasema pass. You always care, excuse me, Nasema hii imenda. Have you seen that phrase? Hii imenda. Why are they saying so? Because wameona. They have not confirmed that imenda, but from the rook of things, that conformity shows. Number eight is implies scarcity. Implies scarcity. Implies scarcity. Price scarcity. I uh, do like that. Limited availability can influence people. Limited availability can influence people to act quickly. Limited availability can influence people to act quickly. Stop. It creates a sense of urgency. It creates a sense of urgency. You will always see marketers say, hurry, why what? What? Hurry, why? While stocks last. Are while stocks last, it creates urgency. Ama maybe you want to buy something. Yeah? To them in the simuyu nata kujua kwa mu. To me ongea, to me bage, to kani abia sasa. Wacha ni ende kesho ni takuja. Kesho ni ni takuwa na best. Now because I do not want to to release you. Na kwa bia sasa na hii. Yule jama, na jama kwa mi ni abia takuja leo tukoni. So akikuja ni sawa. Aspokuja kesho ni takuwa. 
So ukisikia kuna mtu mwingine ataikujia leo tioni. Na wewe umependezwa naye. That puts up agency in you. It shows you that the item is scarce and you may reorganize your plans and get money now and buy. So when you pass by sanane we put it am mwambie uniweke wachika 1000 niweke akuja usipatie is a guarantee you come for it tomorrow. Na maybe hata hakuna mtu anaikujia saa 10 but the person wants to create a sense of what urgency, a sense of uh, scarcity. Next is start lunch. Start lunch. Start lunch. And we write that begin with that quest that you know it is unreasonable. The quest that you know it is unreasonable. And then make them more receptive. And then make them more receptive. Make them more receptive to the original smaller requests. More receptive to the original smaller requests. So this is where you come and bump with a very big request that cannot be possible. You, you just want to attract the attention also. If you come and say, Me, nataka kila mtu wapa, 50, So that starts engaging your mind. That's how we are 50,000. Then from there, I say, ah, maybe you come around 50,000, maybe 2,000 can do. So that relief of being stretched from 50,000 to 2,000, say, 2,000 I can afford, or maybe 200 I can afford. So you start with something very big, but when you are going to go, you will end up. NB. NB. Persuasive messages should have the following elements. Persuasive messages should have the following elements or components. One is ethos. Ethos. Number two is credibility. Number three is passion. And enthusiasm. Number four is logic and reason. Logic and reason. So when you are giving a persuasive message, Ensure that you use ethics, ethos. Don't use language that will offend people. Use a language that uh, is ethical. Uh, give us a message that is credible. Message in Be, Show yourself a passionate, enthusiastic of that which you're talking about. Show that you are really in it. Don't talk like you're being forced to talk. The message should also appeal to logic, especially when you're talking to people who are educated. Give them something that will stretch their mind to make them to think. So let's now look at... Uh, I'm still pursuing my case. Uh, on the course of action in Andrea. Person has already submitted the uh, registration form. So
So to the same uh, structure of a persuasive message. The structure of a persuasive message. Number one, attention taking. Attention statement. The, 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 the title of the, the subtopic is Structure of a Persuasive Message. Structure of a Persuasive Message. So number one, we are talking of attention statements. And rather, this is meant to hook the listener. This is meant to hook the listener. Full stop. It uses humor. It uses humor. Comma, unusual facts. Unusual facts. And surprising questions. And surprising questions. So that is what we call attention what? Statement. Unas, unas mama tuimbo use either crack a joke or you give some unusual facts that you know is in this or you ask a question that is what? Surprising. Or you make a statement that is surprising. Maybe you, smile, maybe you, are, you, you have been invited to go and preach in a church. Smile one day. There is no God. Hmm. So when you tell people there is no God, now when you miss Imam Mahapo, you talk to them about matters God, then everyone now is left wondering, what's the connection? What is this guy then called to? So they would want to listen. That you will confirm whether there is a God or there is no. Number two, in need to introduction. Introduction. And rather, this is meant to create interest. This is meant to create interest. By creating an appeal, it's meant to create interest. By creating an appeal, To audience, audience, to be attentive, to be attentive, and showing them the need for them, and showing them the need for them, to listen by clearly outlining by clearly outlining the viable expectations Yeah, so this is where you are supposed to tell, to make people to develop interest, and then you bring to their attention what are the expectations. By the end of this presentation, 
you will have known this and this. By the end of this, this problem will have been solved. By the end of this, or as you go by and by, so you put some expectations. It's like another way of creating suspense. Because by the time I'm through with this, he should have the problem you want out. So, so they will now be keen, they will be attentive so that they don't miss out, especially if they have that problem, if they have that issue that they want to solve. That's called introduction. Number three is explanation. 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 And write that this is meant to establish credibility. This is meant to establish credibility credibility and build a good relationship with the audience. It's meant to establish credibility and build a good relationship with the audience. It is done by creating a discussion with the audience. It is done by creating a discussion with the audience. Discussion with the audience and providing answers to questions. And providing answers to questions. So this is where you this is where you you seek to establish credibility that you are the worthy person to speak uh, what you are discussing is worthy is relevant and then you create a discussion people will raise questions you answer you also raise questions and they answer back to you. The last part in a uh, call to action. Call to action. And uh, right, this is summing it up. This is summing it up. This is summing it up and offering solution steps. And offering solution steps. That is what the audience need. That is what the audience need to do to have their problems solved. have their problems solved. Full stop. It involves motivating the audience. It involves motivating the audience. To take the next step of solutions. To take the next step of solutions. It should state clearly. It 
they should state clearly why the action should be taken, why the action should be taken, comma, how it should be done, how it should be done, and when it should be done. When it should be done. So basically, that is uh, what we are calling a call to action. It's where now you tell people what is it that they need to do so that they can solve their problems. So I think that is fine. I want to take a few minutes for the break, then I'll be back. We will now look at uh, the next thing.
Okay, let's now look at nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication. And we write that this is any communication. This is any communication that does not involve spoken words. That does not involve spoken words. It has the following characteristics. It has the following characteristics. Number one, it indicates the attitudes and feelings of the speaker. It indicates the attitudes and feelings of the speaker. Of the speaker, first of all. It is less conscious and less deliberate. Less conscious and less deliberate. The thema is less conscious and less deliberate. Number three, needs skills to be expressed and understood. It needs skills to be expressed and understood. To be expressed and understood. Another one is complementary to verbal communication. Complementary to verbal communication. Complementary to verbal communication. 
Another one is that forms the larger part of the overall communication activity. Forms the larger part of the overall communication activity. Overall communication activity. So that is what you are calling the nonverbal. It's where people are speaking without use of words. Speaking without use of words. And we are saying that it shows the attitudes and the feelings. And I think the other day I told you this is one of the most uh, honest communication. Uh, people can use different words to mean different things. But emotions, it is very difficult that you are happy and you start crying. Or you are happy, or rather, if you are, under, you, you are sad and you start laughing. It's very difficult. Even when some people try to, to fake, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, you will be able to see, be able to see. So it is very, very honest. And it is less conscious. Actually, you don't know at times when you are moving your face, your eyes, it is less deliberate. Siki tu huwa umepanga. Unajua maneno ya mdomo unaweza kuwa umepanga, nitasema hii, nitasema hii. But your body reactions, they are immediate. Uh, it needs skills to be expressed and also to be understood. And then it complements the verbal communication and it forms the larger part of the overall communication. Let's look at benefits or importances of nonverbal communication. Benefits or importances of nonverbal communication. Benefits one used to repeat the verbal message, used to repeat, used to repeat the verbal message. But so used to accent a verbal message. Used to accent the verbal message. E.g. tonal vari variation. E.g. tonal variation. Tonal variation. Number three, can be used to either complement, can be used to either complement or contradict the verbal message. To either complement or contradict the verbal message. Number four, it regulates interactions without speaking by everyone. It regulates interactions without speaking by everyone. It interactions without speaking by everyone. It may substitute verbal. It may substitute verbal message. It may substitute verbal message. Another one is best to convey messages relating to geography and maps. Best 
convey messages best to convey messages relating to geography and maps. Another one is best where instant response is required. Best where instant effort is required. E.g. in traffic. E.g. in traffic. Another one. Every human being responds quickly. Every human being responds quickly to colors. Every human being responds quickly to colors from a pictures or sounds. Every human being responds quickly to colors, pictures, or sounds than to words. Than to words. My name. And another one is best to convey a message to illiterate persons. Best to convey. A message to illiterate persons. Illiterate persons. So those are some of the advantages we get or the benefits when we engage in the nonverbals. We're saying you can use it to repeat the verbal message. You can use it to uh, accent to give the tone variations, the pronunciations. You can also use it to either contradict or complement or confirm uh, the message. And we are also saying that it is used where you are describing geography. You are describing geography, map, the terrain, and so on. It's best. It is also good if the people that you are talking to are illiterate. They cannot read. They cannot even be able to write. But when you give them signs, they'll be able to understand. We are also saying that uh, people naturally, we tend to respond faster in regard to a car compared to a word. For example, if you have a red car, you respond immediately than when you're told danger. So the word danger may not invoke a reaction as quickly as if you have something what red. It is also used where we require an immediate response, like in traffic. Yeah. So it becomes very, very important. Now, a few questions you can note, just two of two of them. Is Pirot, December 2021, 3A. Pirot of December 2021, 3A. And August 2021, question 5C. August 2021, question 5C. Yeah, so you can look at that. Let's look at forms of nonverbal communication. Forms of nonverbal communication. One is facial expressions. Facial expressions. E.g. a smile. Smile. A frown. Frown. That's an unbubble. Another one is gestures. Number two is gestures. Number two is gestures. Gestures, you explain Kidogo. Deliberate body movements and signals. 
deliberate, all the movements and signals, such as waving, pointing, etc. When you wave, when you say you, there. Those are gestures. Another one is appearance. 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 Uh, we explained to the choice of color. The choice of color. Comma <coughs> clothing. Comma hairstyles. ETC. You see, zile rangi mtu wamevaa kwa nguo, this is kwa nguo yake. They don't really have to speak or even zile mtu wamevaa. It's a communication. So, the way you appear, zile umeweka nyele yako, it's a communication. It shows us. You don't have to, to, to speak. We can look at the way you are dressed, we can look at the colors, we can look at your hairstyle, we can look at even your posture. We, 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 we can be able to get a message from there. You don't have to speak. The other one is artifacts. 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 And right, but these are objects, images, and uniforms. These are objects, images, and uniforms. Yeah, Ukipata Askari, I'm a uniform. You are able to tell these are. He does not have to tell you I'm a policeman. Kiona to your uniform, Unajua these are. Or his past. Some people carry some artifacts, like I see in the deputy president when he's walking, eh? Kuna I don't know what it means, but that is a symbol. The symbol. In Kikuyu land, how was there when you fix a Nyakafran, when a Perango, a Yokichiti? So they just walk holding it. So when you see Muse and Atebea, Kua Mishika Yokichiti, it shows you who you say, or Akibango Fran. Yeah. Or like what uh, pastors do, wanaweka hizo robes, eh? Hizo kola, nini, ama wengine wanaweka marines, you are able to tell who you are yeah. Or even Rastafarians, and so on. Eye contact, another one, is eye contact. Eye contact, it's going to dog eye movements and directions. Eye movements and directions. Full stop. Still on the same point. Shows interest in the communication. Shows interest in the communication. Macho tu ya mtu. Kiangalia mtu macho itakuonyesha. Itakuonyesha chuki, itakuonyesha mapenzi, itakuonyesha what they are saying. They could even be telling you go there, but they don't want to speak. Lakini venye na vidua macho hivyo unaona, inaambiwa ni nifanya hivi. I don't know whether you, your mother used to communicate to you that, especially when you're wrong, and she does not want to speak. Did you see that? Eh? Ikra. Was it there? Yes, maybe you are in one with the bear, and I don't have a car, hapo, and hapo. And the mother does not want to remind you by words. And if you look at you, you want to and then you behave appropriate. Because you know what you have been taught. The other thing is uh, proxemics. 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 
Uh, this is need for personal space. This is need for personal space. Good. This is need for personal space. Influenced by such factors as culture. Influenced by such factors as culture. Such factors as culture, comma, religion. Comma personality. Familiarity. ETC. What you are saying there is the distance, the proximity tells you something. If I come so close to you, I don't have to speak. I'm communicating to you, sir. I'm either coming for good or even for bad because I'm Caribbean at that chap. I'm a Caribbean. I'm a Caribbean. You're not pushing any hard either way. So when I bridge the gap, or I can tell you that I'm a Caribbean, I'm a Caribbean. It also tells you that this person maybe does not want to speak to me. They are they are called proxemics, and they are influenced by many factors such as culture. Maybe our culture does not allow. Uh, this type of persons to be close to these others. Our religion, eh, maybe it does not allow us to mix. I remember those days in uh, village, in church, you would find wa mama wa meka inside, wa zeo inside. But nowadays I see what uwa wana changa nikana. Uh, issues to do with personality. Kuna mtu tu, anataka kukaa na watu. And uh, ata wakiongea, anakaa mishika mtu wa mapega. Have you ever seen such people? They have no reason to be able to do it. They have no reason to be able to do it. They have no reason to be able to do it. They have no time to be able to do it. They just want to be close. We're getting out their personality is don't be near me. Yeah, I've seen some students, they come to a class like this one. They have to be able to do it. Some chairs, TV. They have to be able to do it. They have to be able to do it. What artificial boundary? Yani I'm aware that we to him or as any mutual sky, but he may I'm a broke. So they don't want anyone near them. It's a personality. It's just to do with familiarity. If you're familiar with people, uh, like now, why is there a gap between the three of you? <laughs> Challenges are very high. <laughs> the two of you began the class together. She came later. So you are not very, very much familiar. So for you, you are familiar with each other. You can be closer. But for her and you, not very familiar. I mean, could you use it so bad? But as we go by and by with us, you can talk. Yes. The other thing is uh, silence. Number seven. <clears throat> silence. Silence. And uh, we write, this takes a good deal of self-control and self-confidence. This takes a good deal of self-control and self-confidence. Short silences give emphasis to words. Short silences give emphasis to words.
Like now that I've been quiet, what are you thinking? As an example of what? Silence. Uh, the reason as to why maybe my silence has not worked well is because you saw that I was doing something else. But if I had just spoken and then I came quiet and I'm looking at you, it gives you an opportunity to start thinking what is it and it gives the, the message time to think. And again, uh, we know this, when people keep quiet, we are able to judge either wanataka venye tunasema ama hawa taki. Yeah. So silence is also a medium of communication. So you can note the question of pilot December 2021. Pilot December 2021. Question 4B. Uh, December 2021, question 3B. December 2021, question 3B. Uh, May 2016, question 7B. May 2016, question 7B. May 2016, eh? question 7B. So if we have gotten that, then that is good. That brings us to the end for today's lesson. We hope to pick up uh, from there in our next lesson. Thank you.